When you repot a Cattleya orchid, it's a little bit different than the Phalaenopsis. And in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to do that and how to have a successful repot. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you so much for watching this video here at Orchidaria. If you're new to my channel, I just share my tips about how I grow orchids indoors since my outside climate isn't that great for orchid care. And I am not an expert, but I do share what I've learned through this process. So thank you so much for being here. And let's get into how we're going to repot this Cattleya orchid. The first thing that you want to know about a Cattleya orchid is that their roots are going to be different than the Phalaenopsis orchids, which we're probably more accustomed to. Their roots are probably going to stick more to the pot. They're going to be thicker and stronger, and they're going to break more during this repotting process. That's why Cattleyas hate, I mean, they detest being repotted. And that's why we have to take an extra care and extra precautions when we repot this orchid. The first thing you need to know is when is the right time to repot? Well, if you repotted last year, don't repot this year. If you repotted two years ago, don't repot this year. The best thing is to wait to at least three years. You really want your Cattleya orchid to not go through as many repots as a Phalaenopsis does. The Cattleya will stay a little bit longer. They can, they are tougher. They are more resistant in that sense. Unless your potting media is totally wrong and it's just degrading and there's a foul smell coming out of there, don't repot under three years. Another thing you want to know is that you need to repot as soon as you see new root tips growing. That is a sign that the orchid is ready to be in a new poem. If you wait till those root tips reach the new, the old media, then it's going to be a little harder to adapt to when you change out all the old potting media. So those root tips need to be started already. They need to be on their way but they do not need to have touched the old potting media yet. That is the perfect time to repot. Don't repot if your Cattleya is in bloom. That will really set it back. The blooms will probably all fall off. Cattleyas again, hate to be repotted. So those are the basic information for step one. Now step two is actually releasing this from the pot. A good idea I've found is just to get lukewarm water Get your entire pot and soak it. So you really want those roots to become hydrated. And why do we want this? A thicker dry root is going to break. It's going to become crispy. So when you try to yank it out of that pot and yanks a hard term, while you twist and turn that orchid and, and you know, manage it and try to wiggle its way outside the pot, those roots are going to break. If those roots are hydrated and what happens, the water comes into the cell of the vellum and it becomes more malleable. So when you're twisting and turning that orchid to try to pull it out of the pot, it's less likely to break. Now, depending on how old your potting media is, you might want to keep this in here for 30 minutes. If your potting media is just sphagnum moss, I mean, five minutes is fine. Most Cattleyas won't be in just sphagnum moss. They'll probably be in more coarse orchid bark. So just hydrate that to make sure you know the roots are going to be more flexible when you pull them out. Now what you're going to do, if you have a pure plastic pot, you're going to squeeze the pot all the way around. Mine is a hard plastic, so it really doesn't matter. I can squeeze it a little bit, And that just gives the orchid a sense of, I need to get away from the side of the pot. But look, the orchid already is, comes out a lot easier. Aha. Uh -huh. And here is a ninja tip for you. <laughs> Do not lose these. <laughs> I have lost so many of these through repots and because I just get busy and I just, you know, throw the tag out somewhere and I forget about it. Don't do that. Step one was to identify what time 
is the right time to repot. Step two was soak the orchid. Now step three is to clean out the entire potting media. And I mean entire, get rid of all of it. So you'll want a basket and you'll just easily, you know, work your way through the bottom. This old bark and old media should just crumble off. Yeah, right in the middle here, I can see that it's a lot, it, the potting media has really degraded. It's just turned into kind of like a soil. Take your time on this. Do not rush. Do not become overly apprehensive. Just enjoy your plant. Learn to, learn to take your time with this. Oh, <laughs> look at my hands. You can see here like this pseudobulb. It was smashed up against the side of the pot and the roots were just growing smashed against it. That's another sign that yes, it is time to repot. I'm going to speed up this part of the video. So grab some water or some tea and I'll see you back in a couple seconds. Okay, I'm back with my orchid and I've, I've tried to remove the majority of the potting media that I could. Now it's time to evaluate the roots, whether they need to be cut off or left on. Now the biggest difference right here between a Cattleya and a Phalaenopsis orchid is that Cattleya orchid roots are more brown or browner than the Phalaenopsis. So just because it's brown, don't go, oh, I got to cut that off. I got to remove it. It's rotted. Like these roots right here are totally fine. These roots right, oh, there went potting media. These roots right here, they're still firm to the touch. And they're brown like this because some orchid barks will release like a tint to them. They'll release a dye inside there and the roots will really turn colors. So you need to go through and look for roots like this one right here. This one, when I press it, it just smashes together. There's no resistance whatsoever. So I'm going to follow this root up to where I can find it. But before I actually do any of the cutting and removal of these roots. I need to sterilize my equipment. So I have just normal pruning shears and I'm going to get a cotton ball. Oh, that stinks. And I'm going to wipe the pruning shears and really, really rub these down. This is where the majority of us are just going to want to speed over this and just a doop, 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 I'm done. Please don't. This is crucial to not spreading any more bacteria or viruses, especially viruses inside your orchid pot. Bacteria, it can easily be cured. Viruses cannot. Viruses are, uh, once an orchid gets a virus, just toss it. There, I mean, you probably can cure it through, you know, send it to the laboratory. They can look at it, but, but it's almost impossible. So really scrub these down. Let them air dry. Do not blow on them. <laughs> I do that a lot. You know, I just get there. And no, just let them air dry. So I come back to my orchid and I find that root, that root that has no resistance to it. And I'm going to press it back to where it does have resistance about right there. And I cut it off. Oh, that's attached to another one. Yeah, this also is just papery. It's like a little brown paper sack. See that even came off. I didn't even have to cut it. And I need to do this through all the roots. Like this one is squishy, squishy, squishy. And then here it has resistance. So I'm going to cut it off about there. 
Sorry, Orchid. And I need to go around and do this with all the roots. Now, this is going to take a little bit. So just don't go by the color. Go by the resistance and follow it back. At this point in the stage, I have already cleaned the roots of the orchid. And now all of these are functional roots. They're not going to have any kind of rot in there. They will absorb and that's what I want. Just the good roots. This part is optional if you want to spray your whole orchid with a fungicide or a bactericide. I don't think it's actually necessary unless you see a lot of black rot, especially up here in the rhizome. So I'm going to spray just this part right here because there is a lot of black and I couldn't really clean up in here. All the other parts of the orchid I got down and I could clean out and I could really, you know, give that airy feeling to it. This part I really couldn't. And sometimes my spray bottle works and sometimes it does not. So there we go. Use whatever you have available in your market. The next step, ooh, that smells. The next step in repotting your orchid is also optional, but I do it. See these old papery sheaths right here that cover the suitable? What happens is sometimes when we water, that water will get down in between the, the paper and lodge right in there. And that's gonna create the perfect place for bacteria to grow because it's protected, it has that sheath around it, nothing is really fighting against it. I mean, there's no light getting in there and that water can really create harm in your orchid. So what I'm going to do with my fingers, not my fingernails, I mean, if you could, have really sharp fingernails be careful is just to come here and remove these old dead sheaths be careful when you're pulling them off that you're only removing the dead ones so i'm going to go around here and i'm going to try to get all these older sheaths off here like this and clean this orchid up a little that just gives it an extra protection so no bacteria comes in this orchid is looking better already without those old sheaths. Now you might be wondering, what about these old pseudobulbs like here that have already lost both of their leaves? They're, they're just sitting there and they're ugly as crap. And you know, what do you do with those? What do you do with these things? Well, leave them on. You do not want to cut the old pseudobulbs off your orchid. Never do that. I mean, only when it's totally shriveled and you can actually bend it and it falls over, then you can remove it and knowing that there's no green whatsoever. But until there's, if there's a little bit of green in there, like even if it's a little bitty pseudobulb just like that, leave it because that still has energy and that is like the powerhouse that stores energy and this pseudobulb is going to keep that energy and it's going to send it to the next pseudobulb up the line and that pseudobulb is going to send energy forward so it's like you having this whole tradition this whole family line of people behind you supporting you and giving you the strength that you need to keep going that's what that pseudobulb is for. So if you go cutting around, I mean, yeah, it's going to look a lot prettier without them, but we're not in this business to have a beautiful pseudobulb. We're in this business to have a healthy plant and a healthy plant will give you healthy flowers and, you know, from there on. So that's part of it. Just accept it and say that pseudobulb is staying on there. Through all this process too, I did mention, you know, be careful with the eyes of the orchid, but also be careful with the new growths, the new pseudobulbs. These will snap, you know, you're just turning around and, and you just push it down a little bit, it's off. And once it's off, there are ways to, you know, you can nurse it back, but it's really, really hard. So be careful with those. The next part is picking the right pot. 
I suggest one thing that I found super fascinating, which was a pot that comes with everything you need in it already pre-made, pre-mixed. So it's from the orchid supply store. Um, it comes like this and it has orchiata bark with a pot and it has excellent drainage in the pot and it has wonderful sphagnum moss. I mean, this right here is the total cost of the pot. So, I mean, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna get the pot that comes like this, you're gonna open it, and you can choose whether you wanna use this as a top layer. If, if your environment dries out on the top a lot, you can just use this as a top layer. My environment is so dry, I'm gonna have to mix this sphagnum moss in with the bark. So I'm gonna hydrate this sphagnum a little bit. I'm just gonna pour it in here. And you know this sphagnum is excellent quality when there's not all this dust because right out of the bag and it goes into the water. I mean, look at that color and look how thick and strong these, this sphagnum is. I mean, that is such wonderful quality sphagnum moss. But if you do not know what bark to use, I suggest to watch this video up here. Or if you don't know what potting media to use, I also suggest another video <laughs> right there. Sphagnum moss will absorb everything around it. So if you put it straight from the bag into the pot, it's going to suck the water out of the root. And you don't want that. You want it the other way around. You want the root sucking the water out of the sphagnum. So keep that a good time in there. Just let it hydrate. Some people add rooting hormone at this point. That's up to you. You can and if you want to, it won't hurt your orchid. Just don't add too much. That's always the rule. Less is more in orchid care. The one that I have is a six inch pot. Now, how do I know how big of a pot to go? You want to get your orchid and you want to set it in and find the side that's growing. And in my case, it's this one. This is the active growth. And I have a tricky situation here because my orchid is growing actively on both sides. So I, in this particular situation only, only in this one, I'm going to pot this. Oh, be careful. I'm going to pot this in the middle because it's both growing to the left and to the right. Normally an orchid would grow to one side only. So here's the orchid. And if it was only growing actively on this side, I would put this other side at the base of the pot. I mean, really, really scrunch it up exactly like it was here. But I'm going to put this one here. And since it's growing in both sides, I'm going to add two fingers on each side. That's how I choose my orchid pot for a sympodial orchid, an orchid that has that rhizome, an orchid that has that horizontal root. You can see it's a horizontal root going both ways. <laughs> it decided it wanted to grow in both ways. So I'm going to set it here and I'm going to make sure the top of my potting media is not buried under, but right at the rhizome. It's going to have room to grow roots in here. And you can see with this pot, that middle goes up. So there's lots of aeration. And that's why I like this pot. The link is in the description. I'm just finding these pots so amazing that I have to share. So here's how my pot's going to go. And now I'm going to mix my potting media. Look at your environment and see if it's dry, if it's humid, if it's airy, if it's not. My home office is extremely dry. So I need a lot of sphagnum. So I am going to use all of that. If your environment is humid or you keep your orchids outside, don't use as much as I am. So I dumped half the bark out and I'm going to get the sphagnum out and squeeze it. So I'm going to really give this a ooh, squeeze. Put it in there. Give it a squeeze because you don't want all that water. You really don't. You want to make sure that it's humid, but it doesn't have, you know, it's not dripping wet. Now I'm going to mix this up. I've mixed my material here and it's half and half. And usually for cattleyas, you're not going to want half and half. You're going to want more bark. But 
That's fine. That's just my environment that is extremely dry. I'm going to start with a little bit of the potting media in the bottom just to give it that support. Give it more. Then I'm going to place my orchid in. You notice I'm holding the orchid in place. So that's always good. Also, if you're new to Cattleya orchids, a good idea is to leave some of the roots on the side of the pot so you actually can see what's going on in there. So here I have, it's, see those roots there? I will fill that more with bark. I will get in there and, and fill that. But I want those roots on the outside, you know, not outside the pot, but outside, you know, so I can see what's going on. Once you're done placing the potting media all around your orchid, you need to actually go back and now press it in. This is going to hurt the roots. It is going to be, you know, you are going to hear some crunching sounds. That's normal. That's expected. I love you orchid, but this is for your own good because you need to be stable inside this pot. So you're going to come around. and just press it down. And now that I pressed it down, I can see I can actually add more potting media right there. I don't want my rhizome buried. As you can see, the rhizome is running directly on the top of the pot. It's not buried underneath there. It's exactly on the top. That's what I want. And the last thing you need to do is the test. Did we do this right? So you're going to carefully lift your orchid up by the leaves. If the pot comes up together, that means it's secure inside that pot. It's not going to be falling over in there. That is what you want. I didn't go over and say, talk about the leaves. Like in this one, there are several things I could have done with the leaves and go over and say how to clean them and how to take care of them. If you want to know how to clean them, watch this video up here. Thank you so much for watching. If this video did provide any help, please give it a like or comment below if there's any questions that you have i will get back to you don't stop your orchid care here i can suggest these two videos about selecting the right orchid bark and selecting the right potting media for you in here in all i hope to see you in the comments and happy cultivating